Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intelligence, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. Thanks for joining us on one of the radio stations around the country. Or maybe you're watching on YouTube, or you're listening on iTunes, or maybe you're catching us on the show website, commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we have an interesting show. We're going to talk about the senior housing market. You know, in the senior housing market, it's certainly been interesting to investors and to the public at large about the aging population we have and how we're going to deal with that and where are their opportunities. And, you know, when you're talking about senior housing, you're talking about a pretty big market. You're talking about, you know, the active adult properties, uh, the independent living, the assisted living, the memory care, the nursing care. So there's a lot of levels of this, and we have some great experts we're going to talk to today and get the latest trends and forecasts. Please welcome my first guest is Beth Mace. She's Chief Economist with the National Investment Center for Senior Housing and Care. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me and hello everyone. Hello uh, Beth, thanks for being with us. She's calling in from Boston. I'm in Studio One here in Atlanta and and first of all to get us started as I kind of touched on, uh, it's a pretty big market when you talk about senior housing and it does um, include a lot of different property types, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, so it includes, um, in, as you mentioned, independent living, assisted living, memory care, and nursing care and each of those property types um, uh, different in terms of the acuity level that they work with in terms of their residents. So independent living would be the property type that is largely um, housing and it offers some types of uh, food or social and hospitality services. Assisted living would be uh, a property offering that would include help with people with activities of daily living, so they might need help getting dressed or bathing or mobility issues from getting from spot one to spot two. Memory care properties are usually those that are devoted to people that have Alzheimer's or some type of memory care issue. And nursing care is um, exactly what it sounds like. It's a property that has some type of nursing care in it. So typically for residents that have are more impaired and have higher levels of security and need uh, medications, they might need IV medications, and they need more constant 24-hour care. And how big is this industry, Beth? Well, the industry is pr uh, pretty big, actually. Um, in terms of a unit count, we're looking at uh, property types of about 3 million units, um, and that would include market rate properties that are more than, uh, have more than 25 units in them, so more institutional grade properties. In terms of the size, it's probably about a fifth of the size of the apartment sector, so maybe apartments have anywhere from 13 to 15 million units, and this is about 3 million units, so it's about a fifth of the size. Um, but it's a growing sector and has a lot of interest. Three of the largest REITs, our real estate investment trusts, are um, related to um, health care, and, and that would include seniors housing. That would be health care REIT, um, Ventos, or health care REIT, which is now Well Tower, Ventos, and HCP. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're talking with Beth Mace, and she's with Nick, that's sometimes called the National Investment Center for Senior Housing and Care. So, Beth, how are these properties overall performing today? Well, we have data through the first quarter of 2016, and it suggests that senior housing is uh, pretty much a market that's in equilibrium right now. The occupancy rate for senior housing, and in this case I'm referring to both independent living and assisted living and memory care, Average 90% for the largest 31 metro areas in the country. And that's a level that has been oscillating around for more than two years. So during that period, um, there were roughly 25,000 units of new products that were delivered, and that was virtually the same number of products that were absorbed on a net basis or demanded. So it's a market, as I said, that seems to be the supply and demand generally are fairly well balanced. But if I um, look a little deeper, and look more specifically at independent living versus assisted living, there are some differences there. And um, the most recent data for the first quarter, for example, showed that the occupancy rate for independent living was 91.3%. And that's just 10 basis points shy of its eight-year high water mark that was reached at the end of last year. So it's showing that the occupancy rate is quite high um, relative to history for independent living. For assisted living, it's a little bit lower than that, 88.3%. So there are some differences as you uh, get deeper into the overall sector. 
Okay. And I think a lot of people would think that um, the baby boomers are coming of age and the demographics are changing, but uh, I guess the baby boomers are still a little young for, for senior housing. What are the, what's going on with demographics in senior housing today? Yeah, you have that exactly right, Michael. The baby boomers are um, they're involved in senior housing, but not as the residents. Today, the baby boomers are, are mostly the children of the residents that are there. So they're helping their parents make decisions on where to live, and um, they're helping to choose those locations and those properties specifically. But they're not really the um, residents themselves. The first baby boomer won't turn 80 until 2026, so that's another 10 years away. And the typical resident in a senior housing property is 80 years and older. Okay. And how are these properties changing, Beth? It seems like there's always new technology impacting uh, every sector today. How about uh, in senior housing? Well, technology does, in fact, affect um, this sector as well. And it can affect the sector from um, an operational point of view, and it can affect the sector from... um, sort of just helping with residents themselves. So, for example, we have uh, different types of monitoring devices that, you know, just as people wear Fitbits, you see residents are wearing um, some type of Fitbit to help uh, detect motion changes or movement changes within rooms. Uh, You're seeing a more electronic health records that are becoming more um, readily used in senior housing projects. You're seeing uh, some operators that are using iPads to track things more quickly and easily, medication management and things like that. So there's a lot of different technology. There's a number of groups, in fact, uh, this group called Aging 2.0, that is working with venture capitalists on trying to develop technology applications specifically for seniors um, for their in, within their homes as well as with, within senior housing properties. You're going to see more robotics, um, more robots in terms of being used to... Um, be the legs of residents, so to speak, to go from point A to point B, or companionship as well, you know, a robot that might be a reminder to say it's time to take your medicines, that kind of thing. Wow, and you talked about the amount of new supply that seems to be some equilibrium in, in the demand and the supply, but it seemed like with all the new technology uh, that's coming out, some of this older supply could be become a little dated. Yeah, I think that there is a, a risk of some obsolescence, um, in the senior housing product types because there has been some new supply coming into the market. So let me, that's sort of a two-part question. So let me speak to the supply first, and then we'll talk about the obsolescence and what's happening there. But supply um, is definitely ramping up in the senior housing sector, not unlike what we see in the other property types where, you know, there's been more capital available. There's a lot of private equity on the sideline. Public REITs have had a lot of capital to, to um, invest. And the debt markets have been um, pretty fluid as well, so that there's been capital, and, and when you have capital, that tends to promote development in property markets. So, um, for example, for seniors housing in the first quarter, if you looked at construction as a share of inventory, which is a way to gauge the, to the level of overall construction, for the largest 31 markets in the U.S., uh, which is the NIC sort of benchmark, that was 5.6% in the first quarter. And that's uh, pretty close to its highest level since 2005 when NIC began collecting the data. And that 5.6% of um, inventory represents 298 properties and about 30,000 units under construction. Okay. So some of these properties may be getting a a little dated out there? Yeah. So I think what you're seeing is that there's uh, new properties that are being developed and there's new design features that are being uh, brought into the market and um, the existing properties need to or the existing property owners need to put capex into their properties to be able to maintain them to the same standards that some of the new product is, is coming out with so you're starting to see the existing property types um, have more and more capex put into them for for modernizing them and bringing them up to speed and being able to compete more squarely head-on with the new properties that are coming out yeah, and it makes sense. And if the baby boomers are the ones making a lot of the decisions now about where their parents go, you know, I'm a baby boomer, and, and we're really used to technology, right? We're going to want that technology in there. And you mentioned about the 
attraction to institutional investors to be in this space. And we're going to have to take a short break here, but I want to ask you about that. And I want to ask you about how interest rates may impact the senior housing market. You know, it seems like interest rates have nowhere to go but up, right? But we've got uh, senior housing, which everybody believes will have some some increased demand as baby boomers do uh, get older. So we'll talk some more about that. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, demographics. We're going to talk about senior housing and the various types. So stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Valuate. Easily share what if analysis online with colleagues. Visit getvaluate.com. Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about senior housing, and my guest is Beth Mace. She's chief economist with the National Investment Center for Senior Housing and Care, sometimes referred to as NIC. And before the break, we talked about uh, investors being interested in this space, and especially institutional investor. What draws them to this sector? Well, I think institutional investors are interested in the sector for um, many reasons. One, which would be um, portfolio diversification. Diversification. It's an asset type that tends to be less dependent upon the economic cycle. Uh, by some institutional investors, it's considered a core real estate. Um, Second would be it's a substantial and it's a growing sector. Uh, third would be desirable demographic trends. Fourth would be that there are compelling investment returns um, in a sizable uh, risk premium for the sector. So, for example, uh, using data from NACREF, we can see that seniors housing had a 10-year total investment return of 12% um, as of the fourth quarter of 2015, and that compares to 8% for the overall property types. So we've seen outsized performance returns in both appreciation and income returns. Yeah, and that's interesting. So because of it's specialized, and I guess some might assume it has a little more risk with its special use, uh, you do get a better return. So what are some of the risks of these types of properties? Well, I think that um, similar to uh, real, real estate in general, there's always valuation and exit risk, especially in light of potentially higher interest rates. Um, if interest rates go up, which we have yet to see that they really go up. Um, that just today, you know, the, there was uh, information from the FOMC minutes that uh, suggested that maybe the Fed might increase rates a little bit again in June, but you know, maybe not. So we haven't really seen the increase in interest rates that we had anticipated. But if, in fact, that does happen uh, sometimes, that could affect valuation, and it could um, add a risk to sort of exit strategies for investors. There's also a risk that we've talked about a little bit earlier about supply risk, um, and that's apparent in some markets, but not in all markets. In fact, supply is rather concentrated um, in terms of where it is in the United States. It's not in all markets. And then there's, um, you know, the risk of obsolescence that we were already talking about as well. And then uh, probably the biggest risk really is the operator risk, because investing in seniors housing is an operating business, so. If you're a developer or you're a financier uh, with a joint venture partner, you really want to make sure that you understand the operator and that they're experienced and that they know what they're doing and that they've been through cycles, um, that they understand what types of things they need to do to be effective to produce the results that you require as their partner. Right. And I guess because it's, uh, some of these properties uh, have some, some of the aspects of a business there's also some upside there, right, to potentially increase revenues. Right. There's always, you know, in terms of, of an operator, um, there's always the um, way to grow your revenues through, um, well, just through really providing really good service, mostly. <laughs> right. uh, you want to be able to maintain your occupancy levels, and to do that, you want to have a best-in-class operation, keeping in mind that this is a, uh, a very personal people business. So you really need to um, make sure you have strong staff and make sure that you um, know how to work with your residents to keep them happy. Right. And you mentioned earlier about the impact of interest rates. So if interest rates do go up, let's say they go up a full percentage point uh, in the next year, what do you expect uh, the impact would be on valuations in the senior housing sector? Well, there's... You know, conventional wisdom would say that an increase in interest rates would lead to an increase in cap rates. Um, if this were to occur and if cap rates would go up lockstep with interest rates, 
Um, and if your property level NOI didn't adjust, then your valuation would have to just, to, just to find the, the definition of the relationship of NOI and cap rate. But that said, you know, NOI could grow, and if the interest rates go up, it's likely that would occur under the scenario that the Fed thought the economy was strong enough to withstand higher interest rates. So that could be um, help, in fact, grow your rents and grow your NOI, and that might be able to offset some of the risk of having higher interest rates and its impact on uh, cap rates. Right. And, of course, your, your value is going to be dependent on the customer, right? And so how are the customers' demands changing? What, what do they want differently than they did a few years ago? Well, today's resident is, um, uh, I think, a little bit more fussy than, uh, <laughs> let's say, the resident of 10 years ago. You've switched generations in terms of moving from the uh, greatest generation to what I would call the lucky few generation, and that's the group that's currently your resident. So those are people that were born in the 1930s, and um, they were born during the Depression, and um, they're starting to get, as, as they get older, that, that they want more services and they want higher quality properties. And they're also buttressed by their adult children, which are the baby boomers, which are definitely pushing for, you know, best in class, um, everything. So you're seeing some design changes in some properties, and you're seeing, uh, for example, uh, multiple eating uh, arrangements. So you don't necessarily just have one dining room. You might have multiple places like a bistro and maybe a bar as well as the you know, standard dining area. That's great. Give me an open bar when I get there, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, it may not be don't well, in fact, it might be what they don't call cocktails. They might call them mocktails. So. <laughs> okay. And uh, if, if you're watching or listening to this show and you're not familiar with Nick, uh, it's a great organization, a lot of resources. Beth, tell us a little bit about Nick. Well, Nick is a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization. And its mission is really to advance the quality and availability of seniors' housing um, for American uh, seniors. And we try to do that by attracting and educating capital to meet the housing needs of America's uh, elders. And what sort of resources are available at NIC for the, for the public? Well, we have a website, uh, www.nick.org, and there's a lot of really great information on that uh, website. We have a really good um, uh, document coming out, the fourth edition of what's, what I call the NIC Investment Guide, and it's a fabulous primer for anyone trying to understand the sector. And the fourth edition of this investment guide will be released at our conference this fall in Washington, D.C., and um, at the Marriott Marquis. We're having our, our big national conference. And that's September 14th to 16th in Washington. And at that point, we'll be releasing the Nick Investment Guide. That's great. And will that guide be available to the public? Uh, yes, and you can get it on our website. It's a, it's a minimal fee. It's like $50 for um, a copy of that. Okay. And we'll put a, a link to, to their website and to, to their conference on the show website. And, Beth, we're close to the end of the segment. I know you have to go, but can you leave us with a tip for investors uh, in the senior housing space? Um, as an investor, I would say uh, know your partner and uh, keep in mind what I said earlier about it being an operationally intensive business. So make sure that you have, your interests are aligned with your partner to try to create the best uh, possible property and services that you can for your residents. Well, that's good advice. And how about for existing operators out there that maybe they're in a changing market technology-wise or any uh, tips you can leave the listeners there with? Well, from an operator point of view, the world is more competitive today than it was. So, again, the message would be to um, produce and create the best possible product. Um, so much of maintaining occupancy is word of mouth in this sector. So, you know, one resident will let someone know who hasn't quite moved in yet about how, how good or bad a property is. And word of mouth and reputation is very important. So as an operator, I would say to you know, make sure that you hunker down and maintain a really strong reputation in the marketplace. Yeah, that's good advice. Uh, technology can help you and it can hurt you if you're not doing a good job. So, Beth, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you being on the show. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. And stay tuned. We're going to have more on senior housing, all types, investment market. So stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The commercial... 